There's a song in all of us, a book to be written, a poem to be read. Welcome to the Song in All of Us. This is a program for songwriters and about songwriting. Today we're on location at a recording studio. It's First Street Audio. It's located on Blue Bonnet Circle in Fort Worth, Texas. And my guest today is Bart Rose. Bart is owner and producer of First Street Audio. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for coming to First Street Audio and choosing this studio to take a look at today. Well, I've used this studio in the past, and I was real impressed with your services and what you do here. And, and what we want to talk about is from the, from the perspective of a songwriter who is wanting to demo a song, maybe has never been in a recording studio for the first time. So I, I, as a songwriter coming in, and I've, I've got a song I want to demo, and I just want to do a vocal guitar, what, what would you tell me to do and, and to prepare for to come into your studio? I do a lot of sessions like that that start from the basics and then they work their way up later on. Mm -hmm. um, I would always suggest put some new strings on that guitar the day before, before you get here. Uh, and don't put new strings on it the day of because they're going to be stretching Stretch during out. the session and we'll have tuning issues for most of the day. Mm -hmm. uh, and don't do anything to damage your voice the night before like going to a professional sporting event or anything like that. You know, mm -hmm. take care of your instrument, take care of your voice, and uh, work on your scales before you get here. <laughs> <laughs> Mainly is become, come prepared. That's the most important thing. You sure. should use your time well and uh, not, to, not to waste time in the studio, isn't it? Right, because in a, in a recording studio, in most cases, you're paying by the hour, and you don't want to use the recording studio for a rehearsal mm -hmm. facility. You need to do the rehearsing before you get here. Right. Well, okay, let's back up a little bit. Okay, it's called First Street Audio. Where did you, because you're not located on First Street, you're located on Blue Bonnet Circle. That's correct. Uh, about 15 years ago, I got started in this business uh, with a studio that we built out in Joshua, Texas, my, my dad and my grandfather and I, and it was on First Street in Joshua, Texas, out okay. in the country, in the mm -hmm. middle of nowhere. A lot of dogs, a lot of mobile homes, uh, mm -hmm. and then uh, we built our own studio from scratch out there, and, and Got about nine years in out there, and then moved to Blue Bonnet Circle about six years ago. So, so you've been here for six years. Been in the business for for nine years before I got here, so no point in changing the name at that point. Uh -huh. And where where did you get your training in uh, learning about how to operate a recording studio? Mostly self-taught. Uh, there's a lot of good recording magazines and recording books out there, mm -hmm. and of course with the internet nowadays, you can find out just about anything you want from searching the internet. But I did go to a course called the Recording Workshop in Chillicothe, Ohio, up in mm -hmm. the mountains. Okay. There was nothing to do there but learn recording, so that was a good thing. That sounded like a good opportunity, yeah. Yeah, uh, it was a five-week course. That, uh, that's what got me started, and after that I, I taught myself and read a lot of manuals and, mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of magazines. And so you say you've been here for six years, and uh, now I know that recently you've made a, a big improvement on your equipment and, uh, and what you have here. Yeah, about every three years there's a major upgrade necessary mm -hmm. just to uh, stay up with technology. And what I just purchased was a Pro Tools system. Pro Tools is the industry standard That's for recording software and hardware nowadays. That's where everybody's going now, isn't it? Correct. Because a lot of songwriters and people are doing uh, home recordings. And uh, how does that play in? Is that a help? That uh, like somebody's they record their uh, on their home on their home recording equipment. They, can they bring that into your studio and you can uh, enhance in, that? Or? In most cases, yes. Uh, with the file types nowadays uh, of WAV files and and AIF files, which is the Macintosh audio format, uh, anybody with a CD burner or a DVD burner mm -hmm. can can take tracks back and forth between home and studio, mm -hmm. and the whole reason for going Pro Tools was, well, first off, it's an awesome program, very mm -hmm. powerful, but then again, everybody else is using it. I mean, a large percentage of the industry is using it, and people at home are, are able to purchase smaller Pro Tools systems and do the, say, do the acoustic guitar and vocal at home and then bring the session in here and add drums and, and bass and mm -hmm. anything else they want to do, or vice versa. So, so, there, so there is a, a little less expensive Pro Tools that the individual at home can afford to buy, and then they can come in here. And then with yours, which is more enhanced, can add other enhanced and, and more set up for for recording a bunch of people at one time. Whereas a smaller home setup might only have enough inputs to record a guitar and a vocal at once, and that mm -hmm. might be all you can do mm -hmm. at one time. But when you come to a place like this, it's better set up for larger groups of people. 
And then there are other things that, that will make recordings sound better, like some of the devices that I have behind me, um, mm -hmm. some of the microphone preamps and the, and the compressors and things like that that people might not have at home. And, and what does that do for someone, for their vocally or their music, the, the enhancers? And well, starting with the microphone preamp, you know, you start with a microphone, then you go to a preamp, and, and uh, typically the preamp is what people will see on, on cheaper boards, the trim knob at the top mm -hmm. of the board. That's where you turn up your, your gain stage or your volume, where, where the microphone gets its volume from. Mm -hmm. uh, if you use some of these outboard microphone preamps, some of them have tubes in them, which uh, a lot of people know will make audio sound warmer mm -hmm. and, and, and thicker and fuller sounding. So. Um, Having outboard microphone preamps is, is a plus, and that's a good way to get a good, clean, strong signal into the computer with. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and then some of the other devices we have over here, some tube compression and, and uh, limiters and things like that. These are uh, these are devices that control the gain, control the volume if it gets out of hand. Mm -hmm. um, if something gets too loud, these devices will turn it down when I tell it to. And, and I've noticed that nowadays most everything's controlled from a, a, a monitor. I mean, you've you've got your entire board and an operation on the uh, screen there, don't you? Yes, it's true that uh, these things that are in the racks are, are being replaced or complemented by items called plugins in the computer world. And a plugin could be a compressor, or maybe a reverb, or a equalizer, or something like that. And it's all digital and. I can show you. We could pull one of those up. Yeah, let's on the do a screen. demonstration of. Uh... Sure. This is a band called Voigt, and they play the the local Fort Worth rock circuit. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to demonstrate what a plug-in looks like and, and what it can do. Okay. This is a equalizer plug-in, and this would be the same thing that that many of us are used to seeing in the rack in, in the past, or, or an equalizer on our car stereo. But uh, they're much more modern and and cool looking and and. and Plugins are sounding just as good as any rack units ever did, whereas back in the past five, ten years during the development of this Pro, mm -hmm. Pro Tools, um, you know, it took a while for them to catch up to the hardware. And you control all that with the mouse? I can do it with the mouse. I've got this mixing board here that will mm -hmm. do a lot of the functions as well. Okay. Um, it just depends on how you're most comfortable and how you can work the fastest. Mm -hmm. If I hit play, we can maybe solo the uh, lead vocal track. and see what the equalizer will do to it. Nothing in my best, I don't care. And you can see that the, really the frequencies try. will start to, if we're boosting frequencies or cutting them down, the we can go either way with it. Oh, yeah. There goes the treble going out the of the mix. Falls Treble's adding up. Falls Sweep the frequency around to find the frequency that you want to work on. Okay. Oh, that's great. So that's a in the hotel of my that's a plug-in uh, equalizer, and then there's compressors and all kinds of other things. And here's a compressor that will turn down the volume of the voice when it gets too loud. I shame. I found happiness. So you just got to play with it to make it turn it down as much as you want it to. Mm -hmm. It'll just do whatever you, you tell it to. Turn it down a little bit or turn it down a lot. Oh, great. Now, now, can you add in the, have the vocal go in there and then add in the other instruments? Uh, sure. Let's see how that works. And as you can see, I'm moving faders on this mixing board, mm -hmm. which is also moving faders on the screen. So it's, all, it's all connected together. It's all connected. That's great. An entire Pro Tools system here where everything controls everything. So we got the vocal only. Then we can bring in our bass drum. And I've done all that I can. A little snare, maybe some cymbals here. Mm -hmm. The rest of the drum kit. Here comes some bass guitar. Guitar. I say maybe, baby, so and then 
then you can look at another view. This is called the edit window in Pro Tools. This is where you can see the waveforms, mm -hmm. where you can actually get your mouse in there and cut pieces out that you don't want and copy and paste and, and move things around. Great. That's so that's a, that's a quick dive into a, a Pro Tools session. That's good. That's good. Well, that's and that sort of brings me to, back to uh, sort of the beginning again, where I, where I was talking about a songwriter writer coming in with uh, maybe just a vo he's going to do a vocal and guitar. Well, let's say uh, the person's decided, well, this demo I need to have an entire band. Uh, how do you handle that situation? Do you, does the studio furnish musicians, or is that the responsibility of the songwriter or producer? Here at this studio, I I'm usually happy to give out phone numbers of musicians who are who are wanting to do stuff like this and, and let the musicians, let the songwriters talk with these musicians and find out who's best for them mm -hmm. versus just assigning somebody to them. It might not be somebody they can get along with. So I'll typically give out a couple of phone numbers for each instrument that's needed and mm -hmm. let them make that decision on their own and they can deal with, with the payment with the musician on their own terms. Mm -hmm. Of course, there again, the, then the best thing is to be sure that you're prepared before you come into the studio and you're well rehearsed and so that you don't waste time while you're in the studio. Right. There's a Go ahead. There's a couple of different ways that people will do that. Some people will rehearse with the with the musicians. Mm -hmm. A lot of the musicians are so good. They've been doing this so long. They don't need a rehearsal. They'll just come into the studio and say, "Can you give me the the the, the like charts a, for a it or the, yeah. the written music?" And and they'll have a song laid down in an hour with a with a really good quality band. So, uh, so realistically, for uh, uh, if a person's going to come in and do, let's say they were going to do three songs, uh, how much time, uh, let's do two, two things, like if it's just going to be a guitar, a uh, vocal, uh, how much time, a recording studio time, would a person need to do three songs? A guitar and vocal for three songs, a lot of times that can be done in, in just a couple of hours. Mm -hmm. There's going to be 15 to 30 minutes of setup and sound check time, mm -hmm. and after that, it's it's uh, maybe an hour or so of recording, and then, okay. and and let's then say an hour that, or so of mixing after that. Let's say then the songwriter is going to come in with five musicians. How much how much time for three songs? How much recording time is needed for three songs to? That's when it goes up to anywhere between two and eight hours per song. The production per can song. get pretty busy at that point. Mm -hmm. Uh, with, with a whole band, you need to plan on about two hours of setup and sound check time before anything actually gets recorded and mm -hmm. done. So for three songs, it could be anywhere between uh, eight hours on mm -hmm. up to about 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's say then that, that the songwriter has, uh, you know, you've completed the session, you're finished, you've got your, uh, your master done. Uh, and the next thing that I want to do is I want to put this on a CD, I want to, I want to, and I want to graphic on the front of my name and stuff and I'm going to I'm going to sell these. Can can you help the artist in that uh, regard? Sure. I I do have a second business out of the same location called the CD House. Mm -hmm. The CDhouse.com. Okay. And you can find pricing for the packages on there, artwork requirements, that kind of thing. Uh you can do your own graphic design or have somebody do it for you and furnish that to me or I do have graphic designers that I work mm -hmm. with that can help with mm -hmm. that as well. See, I think that's what's great nowadays is that, uh, I mean, really you can be the, an independent uh, artist, producer, the whole package yourself. You can do it yourself. You don't have to wait for somebody else to give you permission to go ahead. Now, you've, the technology's here, and, uh, and you can go ahead and uh, may, it always comes back to the same thing. You've still got to market yourself, and you've got to find your audience out there. Uh, you do, is there one type of genre of music that's done in this studio? or There's about, about three of the main the main genres. Rock is the main one here, mm -hmm. and then country and blues kind of fall in second after that. Country, blues, and jazz. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's good. All right, we've uh, seen the uh, control room now. Let's go to the uh, main studio and, and check that out, and we'll be back in just a moment. We want to see our children succeed, but setting easy goals for our kids creates the toughest obstacle they'll ever face, because succeeding in the real world isn't easy. Help the effort to raise standards in America's public schools. Call 1-800-96-PROMISE. All right, Bart, now we're in the uh, main recording room. Explain this room to me. Well, this room is uh, made to be acoustically active. If you clap your hands, 
It's kind of live mm -hmm. because it's got these uh, these cool tiles on the ceiling that kind of keeps the the sound waves bouncing around as opposed to them stacking up or building up in any one part of the room that might become mm -hmm. a problem during recording. Mm -hmm. You don't want any part of the room to be more bassy or more trebly than the rest. So with the way this room is shaped, it's not square, and the, the shape of the ceiling tiles, it keeps the frequencies bouncing around evenly. So when you put in this studio, I mean, you, you design these walls with a certain shape. This isn't necessarily the shape of the building, right? I mean, That's correct. It, it starts narrower and it gets wider as it goes, and there are no square you know, there's no square yeah. angles in this room. It just keeps things, uh, keeps, keeps the frequencies moving around. It keeps them uh, mm -hmm. from standing in any particular yeah, now, spot. A moment earlier, now, we were on the other side of this glass. That's where the control room is. And that's, that's where you uh, run the board and, and talk to the musicians and tell them what's going on out here. Uh, in a session, okay, explain the microphone here to us. Uh, well, this is just a... And this it's a microphone. A, <laughs> uh, this is a fancy. Uh, this is called a condenser microphone. This, this is a. Uh, this is what we would use for a lot of times for the vocals. Mm -hmm. It's good for a lot of different things. Maybe uh, cymbals on a drum kit. Maybe an acoustic guitar. Um, but this is not something that you would find at a uh, department store. You know, you get, this is a professional piece of uh, mm -hmm. of audio equipment. And when you're recording at home, sometimes you don't have these kind of luxuries. So, mm -hmm. the commercial studios. We'll have these kind of things at your disposal, and, and uh, we have other things like that. We have guitars and drum kits laying around here. Yeah, so are, if somebody comes and they need a, an extra guitar or extra drum set, you've, you've got those some of those instruments here that... Uh, I know you've got a piano. This is fairly new, right? Yeah, we've had this for about three months. It's a Sherman Clay 5-foot, 2-inch Baby Grand piano, and uh, this, this has filled a void that we didn't have before, mm -hmm. whereas this way we can work with a lot of classical, maybe jazz and, and blues artists as well. Great. And it's good for country and rock and everything else in between. So if someone's coming in to do a session, now generally, uh, let's say we're going to use several musicians, uh, what do they usually lay down first, the drum track? That's usually where it starts. If you're going to start with a group of musicians, this is where I like to put the drum kit, right mm -hmm. here in the middle of the room. There's lots of room for all their stuff, and it's better than cramping them up in a little tiny room because they've got so much stuff to set up. But uh, And this is a good central mm -hmm. point where everybody can see the drummer and keep their timing really well. We have two rooms on, on either side, and those can be used for isolation where we might put a guitarist or, or a vocalist mm -hmm. uh, or the bass player or whatever. But also, if you put the drums here, you can also put somebody else in the same room with them. We have these gobos, and you can kind of build a little wall, mm -hmm. maybe a little uh, semi-square, and put an amplifier back in the corner and throw some blankets on, on it, that kind of thing, so you can keep it isolated and keep it out of the drum mics, because mm -hmm. there's going to be a bunch of mics on the drum kit over here in, in the main part of the room. And so after you get the, after you get the uh, drum, bass, guitar recorded, uh, then the vocal would come in and that, that person might do their session after everybody else has already laid down the tracks. Right? Maybe, or a lot of times um, we'll do the vocal at the same time. We record it. If we don't like it, we'll, we'll replace it later. Mm -hmm. Because with modern technology, everything doesn't have to be done at the same time. It can mm -hmm. all be done as separate. Uh, you call that a scratch vocal uh, mm -hmm. in most cases. They'll, they'll do a vocal. They won't put too much effort into it. They'll do a vocal and even give cues to the band. Okay, here comes the verse, here comes the chorus, here's the solo. You know, just to just to get them through the song. Because you can always take that out later, then they can go back and do the, the gym. <laughs> yeah, just to keep the yeah. musicians uh, honed in on where they're supposed to be in the song. A lot Great. of times, the vocal will just be replaced later. Great. Uh, the hours that uh, most people record sessions. Uh, what what hours do you usually record? We worked uh, noon to midnight, noon seven to midnight. days a week here by appointment only. Yeah. You always need to give us a call and see what's available and uh, see if it works for both of us. Mm -hmm. But uh, noon to midnight, because there's uh, most people are, are working a day job mm -hmm. and want to come in at night, maybe seven to midnight or, or any time on, time on the weekend. But then, you know, we work with uh, we work with students and different people that have different kind of hours. So there's we can keep it busy during the daytime yeah. too, and with businesses and voiceovers for uh, TV and radio and those kind of things during the day also. At the size of this room, what's the what's the comfortable size of, of, of how many musicians you'd want to have in this room at one time? In, be, between these three rooms, typically you know, up to about five recording at once. Any more than that, and it gets kind of hard to please people. Everybody's mm -hmm. 
wants their own headphone mix and can't hear themselves and you get too many people going at once and it, it, it gets to be a little confusing so and that's another important part I wanted to uh, touch on is that that's how you do communicate with the the musicians out here is through their headphones right the, yeah everybody wears headphones and, and uh, they have their own adjustment volume wise as well I do that from in there okay. they'll, they'll tell me if they want more or less of anything and I take yeah. care of it from in there great great and and uh, you know I have a, a talk back microphone on the mixing board where I Mm -hmm. Push that button and everybody can hear me in the headphones so we can have communication going on. Great. And there's windows and everybody can see each other. Mm -hmm. Terrific. Sounds good. Well, this has been great, Bart. I really appreciate you uh, having us out at First Street Audio. And uh, now this, you're located on Blue Bonnet Circle. And uh, so when you have, when the musicians have breaks, there's, there's plenty of places uh, to go get some refreshments around here. It's a great location. We've got lots of restaurants on the circle. There's a convenience store right next door, so anything you need to drink or snack on. Great. And it's five minutes from downtown Fort Worth, so it's a real convenient location. That's great. Well, thanks for having us out. And uh, be sure to check uh, firststreetaudio.com and also the uh, Fort Worth Songwriters site of fwsa.com. I'm your host, Neely Reynolds. Thanks for watching.